Like the yeah. NBA has leveled a lifetime ban on Jonte Porter for gambling on his own games. We talked about that story a couple weeks ago. I was oh, not here wh- for that. Where he was, uh, he was the most gambled on guy. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. The, with the he's a he's Michael Porter Jr.'s younger brother. Right. He plays for the Toronto Raptors. He's like their ninth, their ninth or tenth guy on the bench. Yep. And two separate times this season. On FanDuel, mm. he was the single most bet on player in the entire NBA. Ooh. And the unders in both of those games hit. So they had launched an investigation, wow. and according to Woj a few minutes ago, he has been leveled a lifetime ban per the statement from the league. Quote, yeah. the league's investigation found that prior to the Raptors' March 20th game, Porter disclosed confidential information about his own health status to an individual he knew to be an NBA better, another yeah. individual with whom Porter associated with and knew to be an NBA better, subsequently placed an $80,000 parlay wow. on his under props with the online sports book to win. Why would they have it, even have an under props on him? $1.1 million dollars chart, my, my. wagering that, because you can bet on anybody and literally anything so. now. In addition, from January through March of 2024, while traveling with the Rafters or their G League affiliate, Porter placed at least 13 bets on NBA games using an affiliate's online account. These bets range in size from $15 to $22,000. The total payouts of these bets was $76,000. Uh, none of the bets ever involved the game in which he played. What a Lifetime dumbass. ban. Good. Yeah. Lifetime ban. Dang, bro. Um, yeah, like you, you. Hey, man, some somebody, some guys got to. Don't you got some parents? Like, didn't your parents tell you, bro? You got a brother that's making two hundred seventy million dollars. That's like, crazy. Like that's, yeah. Think about that. And like, and you're making a million dollars in the NBA. Your yeah. brother. You, listen, like I don't know what like. You got to think about it like this. If my if I'm rich and I got that much money, I'm not rich and everybody on the payroll. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's on the payroll. That, why would he why are you gambling, bro? That's crazy. Know. Your brother's rich. I, it doesn't make any sense. It, Some people are stupid. If you want to gamble on the Cavs Magic series though, the yeah. Cavs are minus 195 to win the series, the Magic plus 146 on are FanDuel. These, are the Cavs the smallest Favorite? I do not know that off the top okay. of my head. The dates and times have been announced both. I got it right read, here. Read game these. one is Saturday at 1 p.m. I knew I'm that was you knew it was that. gonna be an early game. Hey, love that. That's I'm perfect. Excited. Yeah. That's perfect. Uh, I'm excited for all this. There all you that. Go. You know what? Game you know, two is uh, go, 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 go ahead. Game go ahead. two, sorry, game two is Monday. Right? Yep, Monday, game three, Thursday, game, game four, four Sunday. Sat- or Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday. Game five, well, whatever. It doesn't matter at that point. But the, the game time, 1 p.m. for game one, 7 p.m. for two and three, and then the the sa- the other, the second Saturday game is, is uh, a 1 p.m. game, Which two. is phenomenal. And so the two middle go. games are on NBA TV. I will say this, man. And, and you know, you want me to get that camera, man. Listen, it's something about competition, man. And, you know, we talk about the Cavs and, and where they're going to be long term and whether Mobley's going to turn into a unicorn. All that stuff stops when the playoffs get here, right? We always we say it. Everybody say it. We don't care what they do. Right. It's about these playoffs. Now go win. Now, I'm we locked in. We watching. Like, don't, like, all the rest of that, I don't even remember what happened yesterday. Like, none of that matters when you get to the playoffs. That's, that's what you, that's you are in the tournament. Regular season NBA sucks. Playoffs is great. Is great, great. Let's so, go. So, so yeah, we may have been down on the Cavs. We may have been down on what they look like during the year. But when these playoffs come, it's about getting behind your squad. Because there's nothing like a playoff atmosphere. It's now time to show Darius Garland. Who cares if you was playing like garbage during the regular season? You got a chance to right the ship. Donovan Mitchell, yeah, you was hurt. You got a chance. Evan Mobley. Y'all got an opportunity to come out here and win a playoff series, and I don't care what nobody say. If they come out here and win a series against the the, the Magic and get an opportunity to play the Celtics, you think eight people ain't gonna be behind them? Yeah, we'd yeah. be excited. That would yeah, we're gonna be excited. Yeah, we're gonna be excited. As I am, I know I'm very Shoot. down on the team, and I'm not. I think they're gonna lose the series. But if they play well and win this series, I'm gonna be excited. Yeah, and and a chance to play the Celtics, who have clearly been the best team in yeah. basketball. If they can be competitive with them, I'm not going to, nobody's going to expect them to win that series, but it'll be exciting and they'd have nothing to lose in that yeah. series. They, I almost like it. The guard, the Cavs ain't supposed to win, right? They ain't supposed to come in well, here. supposed to and, win the first round. Right. We, but look, I'm even looking at them like this. It, a, win, a, a first round 
Playoff win is a first round playoff win. It is. Now you play in the Celtics and you ain't supposed to win that game. That's house money. Right. Donovan Mitchell. Come bro. It's time to turn up. Yeah. If you want to be known as one of those guys, the cool thing about it is I know for a fact Donovan Mitchell can get 70. I didn't seen it. I didn't see Karis LeVert get 50. I didn't seen Darius Garland get 50, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like I didn't see uh, uh, Jared Allen get 20 and 20. It ain't like the Cavs don't have no talent. It's just about putting it together. So we may be down on them, but make no bones about it. G. Bush is all, I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in to every game. I'm going to be rooting hard. And if they play bad, <laughs> I'm going to be emotional. And yeah. if they play well, I'm still going to be emotional. I know the question Ant wanted to ask for this specific topic today is who should start at the three? Max Struess or mm. Isaac Okoro? Mm. So, G, mm. after that diatribe, <laughs> you need to change the books. <laughs> who do you think should start at the three? Um, Struess this, or is, Isaac? this is very tough. So, here's the way I want to do it. I was going back and forth. This is the part of the rundown I did look at. <laughs> the last thing? Appreciate the it, last G. thing. <laughs> hey, I said, hey, look. I want to come out, and I like I, I like the fact is is when it is is either or with Struess, it gives you an opportunity to spread the floor, and you need that with Darius Garland. You don't want things to be packed up. You want them to be able to drive and kick and do that, uh, especially when you got the two bigs on the floor. Max Struess has also been showing he's a playmaker a little bit too these last couple of games, mm-hmm. but for me, I'm gonna to have to go with Isaac Okoro, and here's the reason why. I'm gonna go with Isaac Okoro because he's able to to erase mismatch that you may have with Darius Garland. I just think about it like this. If they're going to run pick and roll or they want to blitz and stuff, they're going to have Darius Garland out there, right? They're going to make sure that they're going to put him in, in all of the ISOs and do whatever they want to. But it's not that bad if you got two rim protectors and Isaac Okoro who can guard the best team's other player. Uh, you know, I think that he's going to be able to kick up a, a little intensity. He's going to be uh, be able to switch off on different people. And Isaac this year has shown he can hit that corner three. So for me, I'm going to go defense early. Uh, and I use Struis coming off the bench with Karis LeVert, uh, George Niang. Now I got a, a, a nice, nice roster where guys can hit threes. But I'm going to go with Isaac and Coral because of his defensive presence. I love G's energy right now. The interesting thing, though, is he couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> and I agree the with you, Bo. The answer is Max <laughs> yes. Struess. First of all, Max Struess played in the NBA Finals last year. Facts. All right? He was part of a team. We talked about, well, uh, nobody expecting the Cavs to do anything. Well, nobody expected the Heat. I know the Heat are different because they've been good in the past. They were still the eight nobody, seed. Nobody, yeah, they were the eight seed. Nobody had them going to the Finals last year, even though we know they're well coached. And here's the thing. Last year going into the playoffs, we had more confidence in the uh, confidence in the team. We all thought, or maybe Jay didn't, the rest of us all thought the Cavs would beat the Knicks. Mm-hmm. And obviously they played terribly. Yeah, Jay and in that series, it was like, they're going to play defense. This, this, forget that nonsense. You've got to score, yeah. okay? The Cavs got to score. they got to put up a ton of points. And Max, I, I have zero faith right now in Isaac Okoro on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. I want Max, Max Struth, Max Struess is playing with a lot of confidence. One of the few guys I feel like that played with confidence down the stretch. He was fired up in those last games. He was pissed off that they lost that game. Like, that's yeah. my guy. I like he's got the energy right now, and I want that energy in the starting lineup. I don't want to have a starting lineup where I have three guys that can't shoot. That's the big one right there, bro. I, I can't that's, do that. That's the big thing. I got to score. Let's go right off the bat. Last year when the Cavs lost to the Knicks in the playoffs, it wasn't their defense. They actually held New York to eight points below their season average in terms of points per game. They just couldn't score the ball. Right. And at the end of the day in the playoffs, you have to be able to make shots. Now, Isaac Okoro took a giant step forward as an offensive player. He shot in a career high from three, 39.1%. He was 40% on catch and shoot threes. Those are all numbers that in the regular season, you absolutely could live with right. from an Isaac Okoro. The question is now, can he make it in the playoffs when the lights are brighter? Last year against New York in the postseason, didn't go so well for him. Scared or to shoot. anyone else on the Cavs. Yeah. We have to see if he will make and take those shots against Orlando. You don't have that issue with Max Struess. You know he's capable of taking, making, because in the first round, uh, he's just waking up. Miami's used to playing deep into the Eastern Conference playoffs. He was a starter on our finals team last year. You hit the big part of this, though. As good as Isaac has been against Paolo Bancaro, and Ant, pull up 208 when you get a chance. He's been the single best primary defender against Bancaro in the entire NBA this season. In their three matchups, he held Paolo as the primary defender. He was 2 of 10 shooting, 6 points. He got a steal off him. Mm. You can't do much better than that. But if you play Isaac on the floor with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, 
you have no spacing to operate with. Right. And Orlando's defense, they finished with the third best defensive rating in the entire NBA, 110.3. You're going to ask Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, who will be the two shortest players on the court, to go in and attack against Jalen Suggs, who's a terrific primary on-ball defender, Jay, uh, Jonathan Isaac, who might be the single best defensive player in the league, and three other guys who are 6'8 or above. And there's just not space to operate. You're going to struggle so mightily to score against half-court sets if you have three non-shooters on the court. So what I would do is I'm starting Struess, but my first rotation, whether it's at the six-minute mark, the seven-minute mark, whatever JB wants to do, when you take Mobley out or you take Allen out, it's usually Mobley's the first sub, it's Isaac who replaces him. And then you could keep the spacing because you still have Struess and occur on the floor together. Okay. But that way you only have two non-shooters, and that's yeah. with the assumption – if Isaac makes shots, it changes everything. But I just can't start a series, right. and I can't start a rotation until I know Isaac will step up and take his here's, shot. Here's the thing. Yeah. These games are game to game. So sure. if, if yeah. you start Struz and you, Apollo Bancaro is killing him, you may have to say, well, listen, i got to yeah. sacrifice something. Yeah. If, if either Mo, And he has to be ready to do this, too. If Allen or Mobley ain't getting it done... Yes. Yes, he he has to immediately be like, oh, no, no, we can't do that. Right. Uh, we, we one of y'all got to sit and come yep. off the bench yep. and listen, it's the playoffs. You can get it off. I can understand it during the season, but you got to be willing to pivot between a couple and you might even need to. And, yeah. and if you if you still are stagnant and, and Struess isn't making shots, you may need to actually start Karis LeVert. You I may mean, need to go. You may need to go a lot of different routes to get it done. I mean, Jay, let's face it, JB. Is not an idiot. He knows his job's on the line. It's gonna, it's gonna take a. I mean, I don't know if he can save his job unless he beat the Celtics in the second round. I mean, even a first round win over the Magic might not be enough to save his job. Mm-hmm. What has he got to lose? Nothing. Like he, he can't be worried about players' feelings no. or the future. No. He's no. got to do whatever it takes to try to win. And and by the way, I think what's as equally or actually maybe more interesting than who starts at that position it's who closes is who closes yeah, that, because that's the and I think thing. it depends if you're winning if yeah. you're winning then I want a Coro out there if I'm losing I want Struess out there and also by the closing minutes we will have a very good feel of okay is Max is, is his shots going down right, right, right at that point Isaac will have played 20 25 minutes yeah is he confident enough to step up right, and take right, those right. shots so you have more information it'll just be interesting to see how they start and kind of match up because I assume if it is Max which he had his first career triple-double in the regular season finale. He's had nine or more assists in three of his last seven games. His playmaking been, yeah. has stepped up to a level I didn't frankly think was in his game. Yeah, right. He's also done a really good job rebounding. I think rebounding this year is going to play a huge role in who comes out on top. Yeah. But in theory, Evan Mobley has the physical tools to match up with Paolo. Like, that's not necessarily yeah, – yeah, yeah. right. And you would think, I mean, he finished second in NBA Defensive Player of the Year voting last season. This is a guy who on paper should be able to keep Paolo in check. That's right. Didn't have tremendous success this year in the games. Paolo had 42 in the first contest. It was a bunch of different defenders. He was making everything. But Paolo's the guy who's going to get his shots. He's got to contest. He's 6'10", strong, athletic, crafty. Like He's yeah. going to get his open looks. He's crafty. You Remember just have song? to make sure there's a hand <laughs> in his face. Boy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, she's, is it he's crafty or she's crafty? I think it's, it's she's crafty. She's yeah. crafty, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I, listen, the most I, I think three or the most four important guys mentally – yeah, the Morris thing is going to come into into, into play. Uh, having Morris and all that playoff experience, and he's a goon. Love it. You're going to lean a lot on George Niang. He's also a soft goon. He and he he's he's the <laughs> he's he's the Pillsbury goon. Like he's not really rough on the outside, <laughs> but he talk a good game. Max Struess, you talk about with Miami. Yeah. Um, been there, been to the finals, and then you got Donovan Mitchell. So yeah. those four guys, I expect. To, to pull guys close. If Darius Garland yeah. gets spaced out, yeah, if Jared sure. Allen is getting down on himself because yeah. he missed a rebound, or if Evan Mobley don't want to shoot the ball when he's open and you need him to, I think those four guys will, will have a lot more to say. Yeah. Last year against the Knicks, they didn't have those voices except well, for Donovan. Donovan. Yeah, yeah, good those point. other three voices yeah. now are going to be like, hold on, guys. This well, is not what point. we do. You want to talk about playoff experience, yeah. by the way, and this was something that killed the Cavs last season. Danny Cunningham tweeted this out this morning. Orlando's roster has total 91 playoff games. That's all of them. And Joe Ingles, who doesn't play a ton, Mm -hmm. has about half of those games. Mm -hmm. Cleveland's roster has 359 playoff games of experience now. You could also say some of that's Tristan Thompson, who's not going to be a huge factor, Mm -hmm. Marcus Morris. You take some of those guys out, you're looking at essentially 
Joe Ingles outside of Orlando, nobody. Yeah. The Cavs without Tristan Thompson and Marcus Morris, well, now you still have George Niang, uh, Max, Max Struess, Struess, and Donovan Mitchell, who yeah. all have legitimate, legitimate, legitimate playoff experience. And, right. and it's going to be so important. When they get out, they need to bury them. Like, I was watching the old Cavs and watching LeBron, and one thing that they did very well is in the first quarter, the Cavs will come out during their, their 20, what, I think, 14 or 2018 run. Yeah. They bury you. They'd hit threes. They'd finish you off early and make you look. You would be the more when you got a young team like Orlando who ain't been there. They looking to find just any sort of, you know, good feelings. Hey, we we were in it. The game is close at halftime. Then it's anybody's game in the second half. Yeah. If you come out there and you put the the, the bricks on them, I want to see which one of these dudes is going is going to yeah. be clutch. Which one of y'all yeah. gonna be clutch on the, the road? And the Cavs got to win both their home games. Yes, we need that. Series. Because then, then Orlando will lack some confidence going right, on. Right, right. But if it's 1-1 going to Orlando, the Cavs could be in yeah. trouble. Yeah, yeah. Orlando's not a pushover. Like, people no. keep penciling in Cleveland right. to round two, and I, I'm going to pick Cleveland to win the series, but Orlando presents a lot of the same challenges that they faced against New York last season in a little bit of a different fashion, but yeah. they are by no means a pushover. R- real quick, we've talked baseball today. We've talked football. We've talked basketball. We've done apologies. It's been a great show. But we have to wrap it up with the most important thing because – I'm thinking of this now that I mentioned the Beastie Boys. Who is the goat of white rappers? Is it the Beastie Boys? It's Eminem. Is it Eminem? It's Eminem. That's just not really a question. It's, it's Eminem. Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Beastie Boys. It's got to be Eminem. Like the Beastie Boys. Uh, they're they're Hall of Famers. They're they're like yeah. it's like you know I, I like uh who else who's a good, really good player. Uh, I like James Worthy. Yeah. But he's not Magic or Kareem. Uh, Eminem's. M- M- Eminem might be the best all around rapper ever. Really. Like he's he is it, good. He's in a lot of people's top fives. Don't Earl, me? is he in your top five? He's saying no. Earl, see, in the, they use they, they usually say when people say Eminem's in the top five, they be like Eminem can't be in the top five because people in the hood don't play Eminem. He's like, when was the last time you heard Eminem in a club? Mm-hmm. Do you have it? Are there any other good white rappers besides the Beastie Boys and Eminem? You don't Mac like Miller? MGK? Oh God, it MGK is. does not count. No, Mac is, Miller. Is he a rapper? Jack Harlow. Shout out to Mac. I'm Miller. just naming white rappers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jack Harlow's an actor now, isn't he? He was in White Man Can't white Jump, Man but he's all, I mean, he's he a musician. Just something else, I think. I said. Uh, you got Logic. Um, I don't know any of these guys. You got uh, what, what, what's his name? White Iverson. Uh, Post Malone. Post Malone. Oh, he's a rapper. He's more R and B. He's more R. Yeah, he's. he's but he did start mix. with rap. I mean, you know, you gotta. I, what about the Vanilla Ice? He getting in the mix? I forgot. Hey, hold on, hold on. I forgot about this Drake. Wow. (laughs) Overtime is next. (laughs) Peace.